So this smartphone camera sensor is in almost every single Chinese flagship released this year. I saw this pretty cool chart listing all of the phones that use 48 megapixel sensors. Two of the sensors are from Sony, one is from Samsung. There are differences in the way each phone implements the sensor. The aperture is different on the lenses and some have OIS and some don't have OIS. Of course, the phones also have different camera setups. Some just have one camera, some have two, some have three, some even have three plus a couple of depth sensors. So in this video, I wanna go over some real images from a lot of the phones in this list and from a couple of the phones that aren't in this list, do a blind camera test and see if anyone can tell the difference between any of these cameras. Is your phone on the list and what sensor is it using? What is missing from the list though are those real top end flagships like the iPhone, the Galaxy S10 series and even the P30 Pro from Huawei. Also the Google Pixel isn't there and all of those phones are known to have some of the best cameras and they don't use this sensor. Now I don't have every phone on this list but I have six of them to show you. Four of them use sensors on this list. Possibly the 586, possibly the 582, possibly the Samsung sensor. The other two do not use any of the sensors on this list but they are more expensive flagship type phones. I'll leave it there and I'll just show you the images from these six phones right now. Even though the camera sensors have 48 megapixels, most of these phones don't take 48 megapixel images all of the time. Usually the sensor puts four pixels into one, making a 12 megapixel image coming out of the phones. Of course, two of the phones in this list do not use one of those 48 megapixel sensors. All of the settings on all of the phones are on auto. HDR is on auto as well. Most people are just going to have their phone on auto. They don't wanna mess about with it. They just wanna take the phone out of their pocket and shoot. So that's exactly what I did here. Even though there won't be too much of a difference in actual image quality between the phones, the main differentiator is going to be the color science used. You can see some big differences between the images in terms of color and exposure. It's not really a question of which one is better or worse. It's down to personal preference. Whichever one you like more then just go for that one. But it is so cool to see all of these different phones side by side, and even four of the phones using the same image sensor getting some completely different looking images. Anyway, which one was your favorite? Let's have a look at which phone took which pictures. A was the iPhone 10. Shadows appeared a little bit crushed, but very natural, to be honest. The Redmi K20 kept up with most of the other phones in this list, even though it's a lot cheaper than all of them. The K20 Pro has a very, very similar color science to the K20. Of course, they're in the same lineup. D was the OnePlus 7 Pro. The colors on this one were so different to the rest. Let me know if you like those images. The Reno had a lot of similarities with the OnePlus 7 Pro and that makes sense because at the end of the day they're the same company. And the images that I liked the least were the P30 Pros, the camera phones. So yeah a lot of differences between these cameras even though a lot of them were using the same sensor under there. So Oppo, Vivo, OnePlus are all owned by the same parent company so it's obvious they just go and buy one sensor from Sony they'll benefit from economies of scale and they'll just get a cheaper price for that sensor. It makes sense to use it across all their brands. Huawei is doing the same with the Huawei and Honor brands and even Xiaomi across Xiaomi and Redmi are using the same sensor. It makes sense. If you buy more, you get a cheaper sensor and you can give us a cheaper phone. So that's good for us and really all of this now relies on the manufacturer's software and how they use that sensor to give us images that we like to look at. We'll have to wait and see what Sony gives us next year. Apparently some 64 megapixel sensors. Interesting. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.